So a rational equation is an equation that has a fraction in it. And so if you watched one of my earlier videos when I talked about fractions, I said fractions are like those family members that we love dearly, we just can't stand to be around. So when we get around them, we try to get rid of them as soon as possible. So that's the same thing we want to do when solving rational equations. So not only is it a fraction, but now we have variables in the denominator. And so there are a series of steps that we will need to go through to solve rational equations. And so I'm going to take you through each of those steps solving an example, and I'll break it down for you. So let's get started. So the very first thing you want to do is factor any of your denominators if they can be factored. So look at each of your denominators. So x minus 4. x minus 4 cannot be factored. What about x plus 2? x plus 2 also cannot be factored. But what about x squared minus 2x minus 8? So x squared minus 2x minus 8 is a trinomial with a leading coefficient of 1. Therefore, it can be factored by taking factors of negative 8 that add to negative 2. And so what are two numbers? You want to know what are two numbers that multiply to give you negative 8 but add to give you negative 2. And so that would be negative 4 and 2. Negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. And negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2. So that means this factors into x minus 4, x plus 2. And so you want to factor your denominators first so that as you work with them, they're already in factor form. It makes them a little easier to work with. So the second thing you want to do is you want to find any restrictions. So whenever you have a fraction, you cannot have 0 in the denominator. So your restrictions will be those numbers that make the denominator 0. So for the restrictions, basically, you're going to find your restrictions by taking your denominators and setting them equal to 0. So here, add 4 to both sides, you get x equal to 4. So for x plus 2 equals 0, subtract 2 from both sides, you get x equal to negative 2. And then for this denominator, I'm going to use the factored form of it, because that's going to make it easier to solve. You're going to get x minus 4 equals 0 and x plus 2 equals 0, because you take each of those factors and set it equal to 0. And if you add 4 to both sides here, you get x equal to 4. Subtract 2 from both sides here, you get x equal to negative 2. And so you get repeat numbers, 4 and negative 2. So your restrictions are x cannot be negative 2 and x cannot be 4 because those numbers will make the denominator 0. So now we factored our denominator here to x minus 4, x plus 2, and we found our restrictions. x cannot be negative 2, and x cannot be 4. So the next thing we want to do is find the LCD, which is the least common denominator. And in order to find the least common denominator, you're going to want to take each denominator the most amount of times that it's mentioned in 1. So for example, I have x minus 4 one time here, 0 times here, and 1 time here. So the most amount of x minus 4s you have in any one factor is 1s. So you'll have x minus 4 in your LCD. So the difference is some people will say, okay, I have x minus 4 here and I have x minus 4 here, so therefore I'll have two x minus 4s. Nope, you only have it the most amount of times it appears in any one denominator. So the same thing with x plus 2. I have 0 x plus 2s here, 1 x plus 2 here, and 1 x plus 2 here. So the most amount of x plus 2s I have in any one denominator is 1. So I'll only put x plus 2 once in my LCD. And so this is my LCD. I have every factor represented. And so I want to find the LCD because the LCD is going to help me get rid of all of the fractions. And you want to multiply everything by the LCD. So you're going to say x minus 4 times x plus 2 times 2x over x minus 4. So you're multipl multiplying each term by the LCD. You're going to say x minus 4 times x plus 2 times 3 over x plus 2. And then x minus 4 times x plus 2 times x squared plus 14 all over. And I'm going to use the factored form of this denominator. So all over x minus 4 times x plus 2. Multiplying each term by the LCD will get rid of your fraction. So here the x minus 4 is canceled and it leaves you with the 2x times x plus 2. Here the x plus 2 is canceled and it leaves you with x minus 4 times 3. I'm just going to write the 3 in front. 
And here, both denominators cancel, the x minus 4 and the x plus 2, and it leaves you with the x squared plus 14. So now you want to solve the remaining equation by distributing the 2x, and you get 2x squared plus 4x, and distribute the minus 3 here, you get negative 3x plus 12, and drop down the x squared and the plus 14. So you end up with a quadratic equation, and you know it's quadratic because the highest exponent is 2. And so whenever you have a quadratic equation, you want to get 0 on one side. So you want to move everything to one side. So I'm going to first combine these like terms first. 4x minus 3x is x. And then I'm going to move all of this on the right side to the left side. So I'm going to subtract x squared and subtract 14 from both sides. And so that gives me x squared plus x minus 2 equal to 0. And so this is the quadratic equation that we're left to solve. It's a trinomial three terms. The leading coefficient is 1. So you can factor that by taking factors of the last number, negative 2, that add to the middle number, positive 1. And so what are two numbers that multiply to give you negative 2, but add to give you 1? That's what you're looking for. So 2 times 1 is 2 but it needs to be negative 2, so you need to put the negative on one of those numbers, but you want it to add to a positive 1, so you will put the negative on the 1. 2 minus 1 is 1. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. So this factors into x plus 2, x minus 1. And so if you solve both of those, set them both equal to 0, you get x equal to negative 2 and x equal to 1. And so those are your two possible solutions, but... You have to do one additional step, and you have to go back and check to make sure that neither one of those numbers were in your restrictions. So remember the restrictions we found earlier. X cannot be equal to negative 2, and X cannot be equal to 4. And so we got negative 2 as one of those possible solutions. And since that was a restriction, then X cannot be negative 2, and you're left with only one solution, X equal to 1. So your final solution will be X equal to 1. So, yes, it's a lot of steps, but if you take it and break it down and do it step by step, then it'll make a little bit more sense. So don't look at the big picture, focus on each step. So first step, you want to factor any of your denominators if they can be factored. Secondly, you want to um, find any restrictions. So what can X not be? What would make that denominator zero? Then you want to find your least common denominator your least common denominator will help you get rid of the fraction. So you want to multiply everything by your least common denominator. And then you want to solve the resulting equation. And then the very, very last thing you want to do is go back and check to see if any of those solutions were in your restrictions. And once you follow that, that is how you will solve a rational equation. So, okay, now you take a moment and you pause the video and you try to work this one out and see if you can get it. So the first thing you want to do is factor any denominators that can be factored. So c minus 5 can't be factored. c plus 1 can be factored. But c squared minus 4c minus 5 can be factored. It's a trinomial. The leading coefficient is 1, so you can factor it by taking factors of negative 5. Two things that multiply to give you negative 5, but add to give you negative 4. And that would be 5, negative 5, and 1. Negative 5 times 1 is negative 5 and negative 5 plus 1 is negative 4. So this factors into c minus 5, c plus 1. So if you factor your denominators, the next thing you want to do is find any restrictions. So your denominators cannot be 0. So what makes your denominator 0? Well, here, if c is 5, that'll make your denominator 0. Here, if c is negative 1, that will make your denominator 0. And since these are the same exact factors as these, those would be the same outcome. And you'll probably start to notice a pattern in these problems because notice what this factored into was also my denominators here. Now, you can't always bank on that, but a lot of times the problems are designed like that. So these are your restrictions. C cannot be 5 and C cannot be negative 1. You want to keep those in mind for when you're solving your problem. So the next thing you want to do is find your LCD. So you have c minus 5, you have it once here, 0 times here, and once here. The most amount of times you have c minus 5 in any one factor is once. So you'll have c minus 5 once, and then you have c plus 1. You have 0 
times here, one time here, and one time here, the most amount of times you have C plus 1 in any one factor is also once. So you'll have C plus 1 once in your LCD. Once you have your LCD, you want to multiply everything by that LCD. So you want to do C minus 5 times C plus 1 times 4C over C minus 5. C minus 5 times C plus 1 times 1 over C plus 1 and C minus 5 times C plus 1 times 3C squared plus 3 all over and I'm going to use the factor form of this denominator so you can see uh, the denominators canceling and that's C minus 5 times C plus 1. So I've multiplied everything by the LCD. The next thing is you want to start canceling. Multiplying by the LCD should get rid of all your fractions. You should have no more fractions after multiplying by the LCD. So the C minus 5s cancel, and you're left with C plus 1 times 4C. Now I'm going to write the 4C in the front. It really doesn't matter. That's just my preference. The C plus 1s cancel, and you get C minus 5 times 1, which is just C minus 5, but I'm going to keep the C minus 5 in parentheses because of this minus sign. It's going to end up distributing to each of those terms. And here, both the C minus 5 and the C plus 1s cancel, and you're left with 3C squared plus 3. And so now you want to solve the resulting equation. Distribute the 4C here. You get 4C squared plus 4C. Distribute the negative here. You get minus C plus 5. Combine your like terms. 4C minus C are like terms. So you get 4C squared plus 3C plus 5 equal 3c squared plus 3. This is a quadratic equation and how do you know? Because your highest exponent is 2. Whenever you have a quadratic equation, you want to solve it by getting 0 on one side. So move your 3c squared and your 3 over to the other side. You get c squared plus 3c plus 2 equal to 0. So here's your quadratic equation. You have a leading coefficient of 1, so you can solve this or factor it by taking factors of 2 that add to 3. So that's two numbers that multiply to give you 2 and add to give you 3. And so that will be 2 and 1. 2 times 1 is 2, and 2 plus 1 is 3. So this will factor into C plus 2, C plus 1. And if you take both of those and set them equal to 0, C plus 2 equals 0, C plus 1 equals 0, because you're using the 0 product property here. Two things that multiply to give you 0, then you know one of them has to be 0. So then you end up with C equal to negative 2 and C equal to negative 1. So those are your possible answers. However, you have to go back and check to make sure they weren't in your restrictions. So if we go back up here to our restrictions, our restrictions were C cannot be 5 and C cannot be negative 1. And we actually got negative 1 as a solution, so we can't include that one. So the only solution we can include is C equal to negative 2. So you end up with one answer, C equal to negative 2. Did you get it right? If not, if you did not get it right, make sure you go through each step again, and you can follow through the steps to get the correct solution, okay? So go back, rewind it back, and make sure you can follow through each step to make sure you can get to this solution in the end. So again, if you have any comments or if you have any questions, put them in the comments below. And also make sure you subscribe if you haven't already and hit the bell so that you can know whenever I release new content. Thanks again for tuning in.